Hi everybody, it's Jenny. Happy National Quilting Month. For our triple play this week, we are concentrating on the churn dash, so stay tuned. It's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. It's Triple Play Day. I am here with Misty. Hey guys. And I'm here with Natalie. Hello. And we're so excited about this one. We love the churn dash. It's a traditional old block that's been around forever. I know it's one of Natalie's favorites and mm -hmm. it's certainly mm -hmm. one of my favorites. And I think it's now become one of Misty's. It's true. <laughs> it's growing. Anyway, this is an old block that was um, made between 1800 and 1849. So they give themselves about 50 years play. You know, nobody knows for sure. And shapes don't change change. But the reason it's called a churn dash is because the outside of it represents the butter churn and the inside of it is the dash. You know, so it just is a fun block and we've really changed it up to do some fun different things. So let's take a look at the quilt behind me. So this is mine. It's so cute. Isn't it cute? First of all, it. the fabric's so bright and happy. Really yeah. a fun line. And I'm calling mine Scramble Churn Dash because if you haven't guessed by looking at it, we're going to make churn dashes and cut them up, which I love to do. <laughs> yep. You know, I love to cut up blocks like that. So to make my quilt, you're going to need two packs of five inch squares. And I have used Color Wall by Sue Daly for Riley Blake. And you can see it's a gorgeous line. You're going to need some background squares. I use just close to three packs. Remember, if you want yardage, there's about a yard in every pack of five inch squares. You're going to need a little bit for a border, about a yard. And it, ours is a four inch border. And of course, you can make it as big as you want. So for the backing, you're going to need about three and a half yards of regular fabric. But we use this great piece right here of 108 and let me show you this back because this is a fun back. It's so cute. Look how gorgeous that is. Isn't that fun? We got some threads on here which just tells everybody that we are quilters. Yep. <laughs> I think it's a darling back. So if you decide to use this backing it's a 108 piece, nice big piece of backing, and you're gonna need one and three quarters yard for that. This makes a quilt that is 55 by 66, so it's a great size quilt. So let me show you how to make it. All right, so this is our standard churn dash block. This is a standard churn dash. I've made it with um, five inch squares, so you can even use a layer cake and cut it in fourths if you want to. But let me show you how to do this because we need four half square triangles, and so we're gonna choose, we're gonna take two of our background fabrics and two of our colored fabrics. Now, you want four of these squares to make the churn dash. And luckily, this pack has two of each. And so I have over here, I have two background squares right here and two of my colored squares. So I've already separated out four of these pink ones. And we got those right there. All right, so the first thing we're gonna need to do is we're gonna draw a line from corner to corner and we're making half square triangles here. So what we want to do is, here Misty, I don't want to run over this with my rotary. All right. There we go. <laughs> you got it. Nothing worse than having a nice sharp blade and running over <laughs> it with a rotary cutter. Or running over a pin, not the blade. Yeah. That would be bad too. That would Either be bad way. too. Either bad way. News. <laughs> All right. So Misty, if you'll pull up a chair, I'm going to have you sew these. these. You Sorry. Bet. I tried to lick my finger and talk. That doesn't work. <laughs> I should never lick my fingers. Anyway, what we're gonna do is we are gonna sew a quarter of an inch on both sides of this line for two of them. And Misty's just gonna sew down one side, slip another one in, chain piece both of them. And here's one more, she'll slide that right under there. Then she'll flip the whole row. Now what this means is you can actually make all your half square triangles for your whole quilt at once while you're, um, if you like rote sewing. So to be fair, I make one block first to make sure that I know what I'm doing. It all works. I got everything in the right spot. And then I leave it sitting there so that when I go to put it together, I can look at the whole thing and it all makes sense. There we go. All right. So I am going to cut those apart and iron them and um, trim them. But while I'm doing that, I'm going to have Misty. I have two more squares here, right sides together. And she's going to sew right along the sides of both of these sides. So if you'll go ahead and do that, yep. Natalie and I will get to trimming and cutting these half square triangles. And Natalie, will you press those open for me, please? Yes. All right. 
So out of each block of half square triangles that you make, you're actually gonna get two half square triangles. So that makes it real handy. And Misty has those done, and I didn't want to start this until, <laughs> until I was sure you could hear me. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the block lock, and I have a four and a half inch block lock ruler. So we're just going to square up these blocks. For, I don't know about you, but for me, it doesn't matter how careful I am, um, I, mine never come out quite perfect. Really? Mm-mm. I mean, the squaring, when I square them, oh, it does, but oh, when I okay. sew them. I was like, yeah. like, they work great for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there's always a little bit to cut off. And yes. with this size of a block, you would think that you would be able to just, I mean, it's a half an inch. You're great. losing a half an inch. Yeah. But mine never come out just right, so. There is just a little uh, bit of give. I'm pretty sure uh, I'm, I'm joining a very, very big oh, club. I agree. <laughs> no, I'm in the same boat. I just thought you were talking about the squaring tool. <laughs> yeah, no, the squaring tool's great. All right, so when you do this with a block lock ruler, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your words, if you've pressed to the dark side, your words are gonna be on your background fabric. And that is how I remember um, how this goes. And then we're just gonna trim it, and this one's gonna need a little bit of a trim on all four sides, so I'm gonna flip that around. Take off this little piece right here. Make sure I'm lined up in the corner. I just have a little bit here, a sliver actually. It's amazing how quickly those little bits make a difference when you start. Oh, they it really add is. up. Oh, yeah. It really is. If you were to leave them, they would add up quite a bit. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, And yes. you would be frustrated with yourself. <laughs> it, it would just be harder to put the quilt together. Yeah. It is. Now, I made it work for years because most people know I did not square my blocks for many years because it didn't. I couldn't figure out how to do it with my brain. Yeah. But once I figured out the clearly perfect slotted trimmer, then all of a sudden the block lock made sense. And I'm not sure how that all works, but it does. That's interesting. All right. So here are the two pieces that Misty has sewn together. We're gonna, just going to set these aside over here. Grab that little sliver. And these are the ones Misty sewed together, and we sewed just down the sides. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna come in and we're gonna cut these right in half. And then Natalie, I'm gonna let you um, iron them open. Okay. So there's those two in half and these two in half. We're making our bar blocks for the um, middles in between our, um, in between our, our um, what are those called? Uh, half, square words. half square triangles. Half square triangles. I know there's a lot of people out there that have this old brain that can't think of that word at that moment. <laughs> it so happens to all of us. We are good. All right. Now, because these were fives and we only took a seam going one way, we really have to trim these up and make sure. So I make sure that my, my ruler here is lined up on the two and a quarter. And then I'm just going to cut uh, side to side. And I'll probably just go ahead and cut all four sides just to make sure so that they are um, just set in there. So you're just centering them? I'm just centering them, yep. Okay. And so, you know, again, I'm going to line this up in here. It just felt it just felt right for me to be able to do that. Yeah, it makes sense. And then, if you're if you're not using a block lock though, then you would just put the two and a quarter line down the seam down, in the middle, yeah. and then you get four, right? Is that four right? and a half? Yeah, we're looking for four and a half. Okay, yeah, two and a quarter. Yeah, plus so two that's and a what quarter, I do. I do and two and a, and a quarter right here on the on the seam line. Yeah. That so you could sense. do that with just a regular, regular ruler if you didn't have the block Oh, that's block. true. I see what you're saying. Okay, I was a little confused. I'm like, wait, I did that. I did that. But you're right. All right. Just in case. Just in case. All right, here we go. Two and a quarter on the seam line. Mm -hmm. And we're trimming this. And we're trimming this. All right, so we need four of these for each block. Oops, I started way too soon. There we go. All right, so we need four of these for uh, this block and four half square triangles, and then we need our middle square and our middle square, because all the rest of our blocks are four and a half, you need to make your middle square four and a half, and so you can just lay this on here and take a half an inch off two sides, just like this. All right. So now you only have to do that to what twenty squares? Yeah. yeah. Just, so that's not that's too bad. Just the middle. Just yeah. the middle. That's All not right. too bad. So Misty, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna lay this out and then I'm gonna have you start sewing it together okay. in rows. So I'm gonna start with my middle square and I'm gonna put my block squares all the way around it like this. And my block, my color block is going to the middle. And then these go fabric in, you know, print fabric in like this. All right, so 
my the way my brain does it, I sew these three together here. Okay. Um, do, ha, is that how yours, how you do it? Yeah, or do you do I, it by row? I did by row. Oh, okay. Yeah, it makes no difference to me. All right, so if you'll sew these two. Okay. Then we'll sew these two. And then we'll sew these two. Under. There we go. I just had right that here. off a little bit. Yep. yep. It's really so nice to sew together blocks that are all squared. Mm -hmm. It is so nice. Yeah. Once I started doing that, I know everybody kind of breathed a sigh of relief and the pattern team well, especially. The, yeah, the pattern you know. writers were happy because All right, so this the, one goes on that side. Then the math worked out better. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it was like, about just a bit, <laughs> just, a, you know, a little bit. We're gonna add a little. Yep. Here we go. Because I am not a pattern writer, um, and so we have people who are technical people who are pattern writers, so they generally, when I do something like this, they work from my finished block backwards, mm -hmm. which is not generally how it's done. And so uh, it just makes it, for me, that's the way I create and the way I sew, but for them it's so much easier if we can give them that correct size to begin with. <laughs> all right, so now you can see that these are all um, pinned as you would by threads together, so we know that these exact pieces go here. So we're not gonna clip these threads, we're just gonna turn them over and sew the rows down. Right. And that's just one way of putting together a block, and this is a typical nine patch style blocks because you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's not a nine patch, but it's that type of a block with nine blocks. Now Misty is nesting the seams as she comes to them, aren't you dear girl? I am. Good girl. <laughs> and we will iron it when she's done with her nesting and sewing. Yep. Gotta wait for me. Yep, you're good. We are good, we are happy to wait. Turn it around. Oh, you know what I forgot to mention? Hmm. You guys, look what we're wearing. Oh yes, we do have oh, fun yeah. We do have fun t-shirts on. So because it's National Quilting Month, we have these great National Quilting Month t-shirts and we have a whole thing going for Missouri Star about what quilting is and what it means to everybody. And so we've sent out loads of these postcards and we've literally gotten back Oh, thousands. It's been so cool to it's read them. It's so cool to read yeah. them because for some people, quilting is about their, you know, about their family, about reconnecting with their mom or their daughter. For some, it's about therapy. For some, it's just pure joy. Here, Natalie, can you iron that? Sure. And, you know, and so for us here at Missouri Star, we thought we'd put the things on it that meant something to us. So on my shirt, it says quilting is, and then it's creative, friendship, therapy, art, life, fun, love, history, resourceful, uh, community. And so I just, I just love this. And I love that it's in the shape of a log cabin. So cute. So yours is community, all around it. Community, art, story, giving, and history. Yes. Natalie's is the same. Natalie's is the yep. same, just in different color. Yep. Everybody loves different colors. All right, we have made this block and you would think it was lovely, right? It's it beautiful. is lovely. It is lovely, but yep. it is not at all like the block that's behind me. <laughs> no, it's not. Because what I did next <laughs> was I took my little two, in, two and a half inch ruler, that's two by 15, and I came in here and I cut on the two inch line. So I just nestled my ruler just right on the seam line right here, the okay. two inch line on the seam line. And I'm gonna cut here and I'm gonna cut here. So just like that, we're cutting two sides, making two and cuts. Everybody gasps just a <gasps> right? little bit. I know, hold this down for me, Nat. Would you just put your finger on there? When I cut sideways, it's a little bit hard for me to yeah. keep my ruler straight. All right, so then we have, look at that. Four pieces. Four pieces. So we are gonna set those aside and I'm gonna cut a few more of these because the cutting part, you know, when you finish a block, the cutting part is the terrifying part for yeah. most quilters because they're like, what if I mess it up? Let me tell you, if you mess this up, it's just fabric. Toss it in the trash and get another piece, you know. Or make your whole quilt smaller. Yeah. Yes, or make it a wonky, you exactly. know, something. But anyway, we are just gonna cut these in half and I'm gonna do this to three or four blocks here so that we can put them together in a scrambled fashion. I called my quilt churn dash scramble. I have to cut slower that way. All right, so fun. come up here. 
Here's one more. <gasps> We've reached the scramble. See, this is what we're going for right here. <laughs> I have two more to cut. So right here on the two inch line, and I love this little ruler for that because I know it comes all the way across. That's perfect. And, and I can set it right on that half inch line right there. And so I'm coming in two inches to the middle. And we're gonna set these over here. And then we're gonna pull this last one in. And then Misty, I'm gonna have you start putting these together because awesome. this is what makes this fun little project so happy. When you have a, a happy little block, it's fun to have a happy fabric too. It's and just perfect for it. The fabric is perfect. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave one of these here. And then I'm gonna put one of these here. Cute. And I'm gonna put this little pink, purple over here in this corner. And then I'm gonna put this pink over here in this corner. And I'm gonna look at it, and these look a little close to me. And this pattern is a little close to me. So I think what I'll do is I'll put this one over here. And then I'll stick this one up here and I'll see how that looks. I kind of, well, those will be lined up yeah. either way. Mm -hmm. All right, so go ahead and sew it together this way. When you get the whole quilt together, don't stress too much about where you're putting things because it's just gonna look happy. Yes. So we're gonna sew these two sides together right here. Now you can nest where the little seams come together. You wanna make those line up because that's what you're gonna see. So let's take a look at this block right here. So see how these little seams line up? It's important that you nest those as you go along so that because if one's off a little bit, you will notice that because it's all just background. And so it just makes a really, really darling little block. You could put this together in different ways too. Yeah, you, you could put this together in different ways. And I have a fun way to show you when, when Misty gets this finished up, we're gonna press it and we are gonna look at. Let me sew these together. Yeah. One more seam. Yes, one more seam. <laughs> one more seam. That was just a little riff on, you know, the yep. old, olden day music. Yeah. Poor Natalie. <laughs> Natalie grew up with my singing all the time. I have to say, she probably loved it, didn't I you? I do. I still love it. Uh, we all enjoy it. <laughs> they either love it or they're really annoyed with me. <laughs> well, yeah, that depends on the day. That depends but on the day, for Overall, sure. I love it. Right? Yep. Make sure these are lined. Yep, we gotta match it up. You, what if you turned this block and this block in? So you totally can. Let's play with a few of those right now. So if you have these coming in to the middle right here, like mm -hmm. this, and you have these coming to the out like this. Yeah. Let's get the other colored one over here. Like this. Uh -huh. I mean, it's just a whole new something something. So this it looks is a little bit. I could have like called this Jacob Ladder, right? Jacob kind I of. could have called this the disappearing churn dash because really yep. that's what it is. We've cut it in fourths. I did all right. <gasps> you did all right. Got a little Missy. off there, little but that's off. okay. That's right. <laughs> no worries. And, uh, and so, so you know, play with this if you want to. You know, do it. But I want to show you something that's really fascinating. So if we take these and we turn them the other direction. So we have to start with an unsewn block. And I have a block here that is unsewn. And I'm gonna put it together just like the normal churn dash. Like this. And oh, this here. We're gonna put a, a white in the middle. Like this. And like this. One in the corner. And one more block here. So if I were putting it together like this, I would have a white block in the center. But if we turn these around like this and we make the white the churn dash, like this, so you're just flipping them around. And all of a sudden, the white becomes the churn dash and you're gonna throw your color in the center. Now, when you do that, because I couldn't resist sewing one of these together too. <laughs> of course so I have not. another project to show you. Natalie, if you'll grab that. So you're gonna cut it exactly the same way. But when we put it together, in the center of that little four patch, there is going to be a, I mean, in the center of that little churn dash, there's gonna be a four it's patch. so cute. It's really Isn't cute. that so cute? Mm -hmm. I love it. And so here's your churn dash right here. And then also, if you sashed this, 
The, these would pop a little more probably. Yeah. But I love how all the color comes together to form these secondary squares. It's really and it great. just makes it really fun. It's adorable. So there's two great ideas for you. <laughs> I do want to point out this fabulous quilting pattern. This is a new pattern for us here at Missouri Star and it's called the Baptist Fan and it's mm -hmm. available in our machine quilting department and we love it. It's beautiful. And so that's my project and now we're on to Misty. I'm up next. All right, so this is my quilt. I am calling it Hens and Chicks, and it's a nice big quilt. It measures 86 by 99. It's really big. Missy, I love it. I love it so much. Isn't it fun? It's so fun, and I, the fabric is perfect I for agree. It. It's yeah. this it's beautiful really hibiscus I love line the fabric. by Simple Simon for Riley Blake, and it's just adorable. It's gorgeous. And so to make this quilt, you're going to need one package of 10-inch squares, and like I said, we used hibiscus. And can I say that this packet includes llamas. Little llamas. Little llamas. Or alpacas, whichever. Or alpacas. They're so cute. Yeah. And so then one package of uh, background 10 inch squares. You're going to need two and a quarter yards of your sashing. That's just additional background fabric. Then we used one and three quarter yards for the border and nine yards for the backing. You're also going to need uh, your clearly perfect slotted trimmers, both A and B for this, since we're making two different sizes. So let me show you how we do it. Okay, so I think one of the most fun things about this quilt is it kind of looks like you set it on point. You have it a, really lot, does. a lot of movement, but it's just two blocks. We're making this big churn dash block and this block with the four small churn dash together. And that's all it is to get this beautiful. I would have never guessed that. Isn't I would it never so guess that. Fun? It looks like it circles. The, I the agree. Little... It was like the most magic little thing that came that together. That is awesome. I love it when that happens. I love it too. So let me show you how we did this. And I, I used a layer cake. And so this is how I drew on it for my cutting. This is what it looks like to make the big block. And all of these lines are actually your cutting lines, not your sewing lines. Okay. And so, you know, you could go ahead and cut it apart first if you wanted, which is what I did. I just cut it in half both directions like this and like this. And then just like Jenny did, you know, we sewed on either side here and on either side of this middle line to get the pieces that we need. And I went ahead and have that ready here because the only difference between what you did, Jenny, and mm -hmm. what I did is I didn't cut down my bar blocks. I yes. kept them four and a half by five. And so when you put this together, you just have a full five inch square in the middle and those four and a half by five inch bar blocks go against it. Just Perfect. like that. And she had originally sewn this together, but we thought yeah. it would make yeah. more sense to you if we if showed you could it putting see it, it in together. pieces. Yeah. So we pulled it apart. And then your four and a half inch squares, which I squared up with my clearly perfect trimmer A, go in your corners just like that. So again, the half square triangles are four and a half, but these are four and a half this way by five this yep. way. And so the middle block has to be five. And that's actually a cool thing to remember about churn dashes because this, as long as this block matches up one way with this, these could be any- It could be so long. They could be any way you want exactly. them to. Exactly. Yeah, and be so really then fun. you sew that together and this is what your finished large block looks like. It's just that easy. Um, and I think, how many did I have in here? I think it's- Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Wait, no, nope, I we missed that it. one. We lost it. I lost it. Let, <laughs> math, it's not math a good time for me to do one, math. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. 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 Big blocks. <laughs> That should have been much easier than it was. I don't That's know why okay. that was so difficult. That's okay. All right, so let's move this out of the way and I'll show you how to make the small blocks. So I also have a cutting diagram on here and I know it looks like a lot of lines, but it's not as confusing as it looks, I promise. We're gonna do the same thing that we did on the others and we're gonna cut this in half both directions. So on our center lines here. It's always such a great idea to know how to get the best use out of a layer cake. And I love that you've done this. This makes really, there real, is, it's very clear. There's like no waste except right. for what you square. That's it. That little bit. That tiny little bit. And so on here, we're gonna sew a quarter inch seam on either side, both directions. So if you okay. want to do that. I am happy to. We'll start there. And by doing this, we actually get four of the little churn dash blocks out of each set of layer cake squares. 
Oh, that's cool. So it goes really quick. You have to trim these. Back the other direction. Back the other direction. And I notice you start on the left and I start on the right. Oh, that's funny. I know, I'm not sure if that's because Just I'm right-handed yeah, or left -handed. it must be. I was noticing that when you sewed mine. I was yeah. like, oh, that's interesting. Just like that. Just we're like done. that, we are done. Jenny is so fast with that machine. And then we can cut these in half both directions. And vertically and, and horizontally. And vertically and horizontally, exactly. So we're cutting it four times. Four times. This is the easy eight. All right, so then we want to cut it this direction. We can just lay it on the edge since this is a two and a half inch ruler. Make those cuts. Just it's keep bitty, it together. Bitty, bitty cute little, bitty little, little ones. Angles. They're so cute. I, I usually cut it in half vertically and horizontally first Do because you? the other ones have lines. And I oh, figure I can true. always, if they scoot around, I can always. You can always do it. Well, we know, can do the, the other ends. half that way. Let's try that. So we'll cut that. Don't press them quite yet because oh, we're going to square. Okay. I know you were trying to I be so to. helpful. I wanted to. Yes, I wanted Natalie, to. Natalie, grab. Oh, no, we only have. Never mind. I was going to say, grab another uh, rotary cutter and we can all square, but... Um, That's okay. We don't have to square them all because I have some of them done. But you, I oh, just, you are perfect. I just want to show them how so to do So then that it. was side to side, top to bottom. So now even if this moves yeah, out, you can just can cut just it cut out of the line. That, yeah. You're right, Jenny. That is easier. It just, you know, I'm, I'm a messy sewer. Nah. So I come up with ways to do things no, that are still going to work. That is brilliant. <laughs> well, not brilliant, probably, but, I, you know, I, probably... You know, maybe on the scale. Just up own there. it, Jenny. It's <laughs> a really good, <laughs> a really a good hack. Great tip, great tip. There we go. All right, so now we have those all cut down, and we're just going to use our little clearly perfect slotted trimmer, and we are going to use this tiny two-inch line. Oh, it's very little waste. It's isn't very it? little waste. That's all we're trimming off. So now you know, out of a charm square, you can get eight. Two, two inch, inch half square triangles. That's right, just like that. And so when you start thinking about all the different things you do with half square triangles. Exactly, ooh, exactly. Really and so tight. I actually have our enough for our block already made and squared up for us, but Natalie's gonna press so that show back. So us on this one, where do you sew on this one? So on this one, we're gonna sew on each outside edge and on either side of this middle line. Okay, perfect. So if you wanna do that. Well, we can just do one to show. Yep, them. that's true. Just one is enough. Because you have the other ones. Yep. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go here. Yep. And how, how wide apart are these lines? So they are an inch and a quarter apart. Okay. So this is an inch and a quarter, and I am... Doing great. All right. So I have sewed edges and both sides and the, of the middle. And down the middle, exactly. And so then we're just going to cut these apart now. Nice. So same thing, we're going to cut it in half, both directions, and then we're going to come back and cut these long sides. And by doing this, you get your tiny little bars. You get bars. your tiny little bars, and these measure two by two and a half. And so we can oh, just perfect. press those back. And then I have some of our pieces here ready to go. I went ahead and sewed the middle ones on. But this, so is, have, this yeah. is a two and a half inch square in the middle. And then we have our two and a half by two inch bar blocks and our tiny, tiny little, corners. little two inch corners. All right, so let me sew that That's top really cool. row. Yeah, you can sew those. Here's this well, one Well, we too. all love tiny. And the fact that you've um, you know, put tiny with big is just stunning it, in this It quilt. came together so beautifully. I'm really happy with it. Natalie has already requested that Misty make her one of these. <laughs> That's true. She's like, and Misty's you? already refused. I was like, uh, maybe in eight years. I would yeah. like to. Not today. Not today. <laughs> but that's okay. I still love her. I know you do. <laughs> I love you too. We just get so busy. It would be fun to be able to do more things for yes. each other. I know we con kind of concentrate on that at Christmas time. It's don't we? true. We try. We have good intentions for sure. <laughs> All right, so now I am just making these little seams line up, nesting them. Yep. Nesting this one. And coming all the way to the end. 
There's that little tiny. You might want to press there that. There we go, yep. And then I will sew these yeah. together on here. And basically, the way I remember this, because I'm a little angrily challenged, is that my color touches the color. Yep. And so those have to be turned in, and it's just one on either side of that bar block for the top and the bottom. Exactly. And it's really the exact same thing you did on the big one, just working with small pieces. It's not any harder, it's just smaller. That's exactly right. We're almost there. And we are going to add this. Oh, look how cute. It's so cute, isn't it? <laughs> it's so cute. I love it. And so then I've got some sashing pieces because those little blocks finish up at five and a half inches square. And so in between, you can see here, these are our five and a half by three inch that we put in between this way. And then this, oh, I can't remember how tall this block actually is now, but that sashing strip is three inches by 13 inches that runs this direction. And so every block has the sashing strip put in between the four little blocks, and then you just alternate in the quilt. Here's a big block, here's a little one. And so you can see each row, one starts with a big block, and one starts with a small, and you just switch back and forth, and that is it. So what size do your so uh, your blocks cute. end up? These are 13-inch 13 13 inch square. squares. And so they, they Same just, as the big ones. Yeah, yeah, they just have to match up. Exactly. So, All right, so this is, again, how big? This is three by five and a half, and three by 13. That is so. awesome. Works great. So much easier than it looks. It yeah. really is, isn't it? It's super I'm a, fun. I'll just make myself one. Perfect. That's right. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> we'll just have a sewing night. That's right. Yes. Right. And so we'll I... call it churn dash day. I That's like right. it. Churn It'll be so day. fun. So before I finish up, I do want to show you this backing. It's this really cute kind of like pebbly pattern. Oh, that's sweet. oh it's very it's cute. It's really cute. It's abstract, but it almost looks like a calico from a distance. Yes. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really so cute. fun. And I used the um, Simply Roses quilting pattern on that. And it's got this nice big six inch border with that hibiscus print on it, which I, I think hibiscus. turned Absolutely. out so great. I just really love this quilt. So it's really cute. And how big is it again? 86 by 99. It's a nice it's a, big, a big quilt. quilt so. That's awesome. Well, All Matt. right, you're up next. Okay. Natalie, Ready? I just love your quilt. I love your project. Yes, so it cute. turned out really good. So I wanted to do something. I had a layer cake to work with, and I wanted to make the biggest churn dash I could make I with, right? with <laughs> one layer cake. So um, all of my half square triangles are 10 inch squares. So these okay. are the whole oh, thing awesome. is just it is essentially a layer cake quilt. I love so it. So easy. Yeah. So and you I did called that it fun border. Yes, I thought that. So I thought of that at the end, and I was like, "Oh, I have these extra half square triangles, and this would be really cool." So I love it. So yeah, I'll tell you guys how to do that in just a minute. Awesome. So what are you calling it? So my quilt is called Colossal Churn Dash. Colossal, which is I love it. accurate. Yeah, <laughs> it's colossal. It's seventy four by ninety three. Oh, it's a nice big quilt. So Natalie, what do we need to make your quilt? So to make my quilt, you'll need one package of ten inch squares. And I've used Honey Bee by My Mind's Eye for so Riley cute. Blake. It's a beautiful it's, line. It's really beautiful, and I love the line work on some of the prints. It's yeah. just gorgeous. It's gorgeous. You also need two and a half yards of an accent fabric, and that's this teal color. It's, it's what I made the large churn dash out of and the inner border. It's, it's beautiful. A, just beautiful. You'll need a yard and a quarter of outer border fabric. And for your backing, you'll need five and three quarter yards. And I use this beautiful this. Yeah. print that has, um, oh, it is it so has pretty. The, the little beehive and the bees and flowers. It's and what beautiful. quilting pattern did so you So this is one of our newer quilt patterns. It's called Time Warp. And I just love it. I think it's very I fun. I love how it shows up on here. Yeah. yeah. It makes it look three dimensional. It's, it's, it's got really a lot pretty. of fun texture. It's really pretty. It's awesome. All right. So this is super simple. So. Let me show you how to do this. Okay. You'll want to take your um, your accent fabric and cut a bunch of 10 inch squares. Whoops, I don't need that don't little need guy. The little one? Not this time. Do so. you need the big one, the five inch? Nah, this one's fine. All right. Six to 16 is 10, right? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Or always like I say, always double Count check. Count twice, cut once. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right, and you should um, you should always be able to get four cuts out of one 10 inch strip. Yeah. Four squares, I mean. Yeah, you'll get four squares. Yep. Have that little piece. Yep. Get some more room. 
just a little bit. There you go. All right, then what we're gonna do is draw a line on this. We're gonna make a half square triangle and we want it to stay 10 inches so that it matches all mm -hmm. of its other sister blocks. I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready. I'm gonna sew. <laughs> ready to go. Oops. But this is a lot of half square triangle fabric to lose. So um, at least for four of them, sew a half an inch on one away from the line, the sew line on one side. Okay. All right, so let's grab, that'll be good. Yep. So we're gonna put them right sides together. We'll sew on the, on the drawn line to get our 10 inch half square triangle All right. and then a half an inch away so that we can have four half square triangles in our corners. Okay. Did you pick? And I did. Okay, that's what I was gonna ask. So you'll notice my my outer border is this yellow. Yeah. So I wanted the, um, the half square triangles that I had in the corners to also be a yellow print. Okay, so, so you need so a different yellow print. I just picked. Wait, does it have to be exactly a half? No, okay. it does not. You're gonna square it. Um, you're gonna square it a little bit. So I don't actually, we don't have to do oh, that because, okay. because there's several different yellow prints that you can use and they, they blend pretty well. So that one is the same print, but you can see that this one isn't. It's different, yeah. Yeah, so, so that's okay. Like you should and all of these I'm noticing me. now are yellow. What do you mean? With the blue. I, I wanna see if it's a half. Oh, I'm very it's close. Very, very good, close. really, really good job. Don't all right, so we me. are gonna cut these apart. And then if you'll press that open, Absolutely. that would be great. Whoops. There we go. Get it to lay flat. There's that one. All right. And so you can see I laid out my, my layer cake squares. It's in a six by seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven down. And you did nothing down. to those. You just yeah. sewed them I together. did nothing to those. And then I have... Um, Oop, this way. <laughs> so you, you'll put your, your blue in. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of these and four of them, you want to sew your extras. Your extra on the other side. I would. I just did all of mine because yeah. I figured I would use them for something eventually. Sure. Totally. Maybe one of those everything but the kitchen sink quilt where you just put your <laughs> leftover blocks. But, so but yeah, I mean, then you just lay square. them out in this diagram. So you have a half square triangle here. And, you know, print, print, print. And then on this one, you've got your half square triangle and a bunch of background squares. And so really just, you're just following the diagram and you've got a bunch of 10 inch squares. You sew them together and that is the whole inside of your quilt. It's so easy. So quick. That is a beautiful so color fast. with that line too. It's it got a great contrast. Mm -hmm. I think so it would look amazing <laughs> to, with, with a multitude of different colors. Sure. A coral would be pretty. A green would be pretty. Yeah. yeah. You know, just... Yeah. Just something that contrasts. So depending on your line, you can make your churn dash any color you want. All right, so if you will press this open, of then course. we'll square it, and then we'll talk about how to make the inner and outer border, because this is gonna be different than your typical, your standard mm -hmm. borders. There is that. All right, so I'm gonna grab my squaring tool, and we, I squared these to whoop, nine inches. So it's just a little bit of of weight um, waste. Oh, that yeah. is very close. Very close. Yeah. So because you're you know because you're a half an inch right. apart, you get a ten inch one and a nine inch one and um, yeah, I'll go ahead and cut that. I guess. Go ahead and trim yeah, it up. Might as well. So it squares to nine inches. It squares to nine. So I wanted my inner and outer borders to be um, different sizes. So this strip right here is four inches. Okay. And this is five and a half to okay. get a nine inch. Once you add the seam, you lose that half inch and five and four is nine. Okay. So that's yeah, how that, that works. All, All right. right. So what you're going to do is you're going to piece these together in, in long strips because obviously a 45 inch wide isn't going to be as long as the quilt. So you, you piece your, your long four inch strips together and then you're going to sew these two together to so make one there. wide border piece. So she's yeah. got a strip set All like right? this. So your strip sets look like this, and you're gonna sew your sides on first, uh -huh. and then on the top and bottom, you're gonna add your half square triangle to the corner and sew that um, to the top and bottom. That is so awesome. They just, it's just a giant churn dash border. border. And it, it goes like this with the blue in 
and the sashed strip like this so that it makes a churn dash that surrounds the churn dash I in love the middle. It. It's very cute. So I hope that uh, I hope that is clear and it makes sense. It makes sense to me. Yeah. Yeah, I love it's, it. It's you'll awesome. want to measure your quilt and cut your your top and bottom borders to match because you're adding your um, your half square triangles mm -hmm. on the corners, so you want that to be pretty exact. Yeah. yeah. Um, Absolutely. If, if you want to measure you can, if you don't want to measure, I'll just tell you the, the little hacky secret thing that I did. So I, um, I put these on and then cut them to the length of the quilt, right? The sides the first. Sides. So I made sure that was trimmed and flat. And then for the top and bottom, I added the one on the end so that I got this nice crisp corner. When I got down here, <laughs> I didn't sew it all the way to the end, Ah. but I took it over to the ironing board and pressed it back so that it was all flat and lined up neat. And then I just cut it a, a quarter of an inch over over so That's that I when i done. added yeah. the half square triangle it would line up with the seam and yeah, that worked perfect. for me okay yeah that's a that's a hack it's something you can practice at if you want to go ahead and measure it and cut it to that exact length that's the right way to do it yes. <laughs> yeah that i would have done it that way yeah. because yeah. that's how i put things yes. together so it's, it was that. easier for me to just cut a quarter of an inch of extra and then have that end up in the seam and line it up and it came out great. It looks awesome. Well, I would say it's colossal. It, it is colossal. colossal. <laughs> it is colossal. It's Again, really fun. It's, it's pretty big. I think it's a good twin size, 74 yeah. by 93. Oh, we showed the backing. Yeah. 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 And it's great. And there's some prints in here like this one, I think would make a great binding print. There's, yes. They're just so great. It's a, it's a beautiful line. It's a beautiful Love line. It. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the colossal churn dash. Well, girls, I think this triple play was a home run. I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> Turned out great. We hope we've inspired you with some great ideas about the churn dash block. So we hope you enjoyed this triple play tutorial from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. See you later. Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company and I am here with Natalie and with Misty and we hope you enjoyed watching our latest triple play. You can find us together on the third Friday of each month as we hit another tutorial out of the park. If you aren't already part of the Missouri Star Quilt Company family, be sure to subscribe and click that bell to be notified each time we release a new video. See you next time. time.